Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to Taylor Tuesday. And thank you all for joining us. My name is Dr. Bill McCann. I'm in private practice in Concord, New Hampshire. Uh, I've been involved with Taylor Medical right from the beginning and um, am, uh, was very pleased that I was asked to host tonight. Um, I've been in private practice now for 32 years and uh, involved in uh, the podiatric profession in both uh, APMA PAC as well as the American Academy of Podiatric Practice Management for many years. Um, very, very happy to be here and uh, to be a part of this tonight. Um, we have a really exciting uh, topic for you tonight, uh, something that I think is really um, cutting edge and really can be um, tremendously helpful to your patients and profitable to your practice. And tonight to talk to you about a new frontiers in microwaves and podiatry, we've got Dr. Robert Cononello. He's the owner of Orangetown Podiatry, where he's been in private practice for 30 years. He's a fellow of the American College of Foot and Ankle Surgeons, a fellow and past president of the American Academy of Podiatric Sports Medicine, and the past global clinical advisor of Special Olympics International, and is the current clinical director of Special Olympics New Jersey. He's authored several peer-reviewed articles, chapters, and speaks nationally and internationally on podiatric sports medicine. My both daughters were very involved with Special Olympics throughout their college careers, and uh, it really was a very meaningful experience. Uh, so it's really good work you're doing there, uh, Dr. Cononello. Um, next slide, please. So um, for all of you who um, want to see the replays, we have a very nice archive of past lectures or even our lecture from tonight will go into it. You know, life happens, interruptions, kids, the dog melts down, you're on call, uh, you know, you want to watch it later. You never know what comes up in life. You may not be able to make all the meetings, but go into the archives. They're right here, really easy to do. We recommend going back and looking at some of the excellent webinars and topics on all kinds of really important topics, uh, uh, microwaves and podiatry, uh, 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 coding, uh, all uh, really great, well-known speakers. I, I think it's easy to do. You're going you, you're gonna to find it's a wealth of information, help you to build your practice, and uh, it's uh, uh, really easy to do. You just want to go to the webinars located at www.taylormedical.com hit webinars button in the upper right-hand corner, and you can check out the whole library. Next slide, please. So if you aren't familiar with Taylor Medical, or if this is your first time joining with us on a, a Taylor Tuesday, uh, I'd like to just take a couple minutes to explain what Taylor Medical um, uh, 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 is and how, how they can help you in your practice. Uh, first, Taylor Medical is a, a group purchasing organization, a GPO. And what they do is they leverage the buying power um, of their members uh, who become part of the GPO to negotiate discounts with key vendors in the podiatric industry. And they're going to save you money on everything that you uh, could think of that you buy. Um, money on products, supplies, capital equipment um, that you're already ordering for your practice. You know, uh, not a not, membership is free, and you also receive a one percent annual rebate on all your qualifying purchases. It's really a nice thing. Um, you know, you're all familiar with um, uh, Jerry Maguire and the Show Me the Money scene. Well, uh, let Taylor Medical show you the money, show you where you can really make some money and save some money in your practice. We don't have a lot of opportunities to save anymore. We all know that, you know, uh, sequestration is back with Medicare. Staff salaries have all gone up and uh, rent's gone up. Everything's gone up. Um, but you want to do something to bring it down. This is a wonderful way to do it. There's not many areas where you can really do that. So why not get your medical supply cost analysis from Taylor? Um, give us a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet. And if you can't do that, you know, just send in some receipts and Taylor will help you to um, save money in your practice. Bill, can I just add that we actually did that today and uh, we found out we could save $3,000. That's serious. Uh, that, that's some serious savings. Yeah, um, well, uh, again, I'd, I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd like to 
uh, introduce, uh, for those of you who may just be joining in, our, our speaker tonight, uh, uh, Dr. Robert Cononello uh, from Orangetown Podiatry in New Jersey. And we also have with us um, uh, two, two of our representatives from SWIFT, uh, we, we, we have uh, 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 P, 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 Peter Tur Turnbull and um, Chris McMara, and they um, are bas basically SWIFT USA, for those of you who may not know, is a U.S.-based arm of Emblation Limited, medical device manufacturer based in Scotland. And Chris and Pete founded SWIFT USA back in 2018 after spending 15 years in the medical industry running distribution businesses in both Canada and Australia. These fellows have a lot of uh, practical experience and um, they're uh, bringing this tremendous technology here. So gentlemen, uh, I turn it over to you and uh, we're really excited to hear what you have to say. Awesome. We appreciate it, Dr. McCann. And uh, thanks, Carly, for the, the warm welcome. Um, Big thanks also to to the whole team at, at Taylor. I know uh, Stephanie, Ashley, and Carla have just uh, you know just awesome in the in the office for you guys. So I'm sure there's more names that I'm forgetting there, but just a, a quick little shout to the a delight to work with. So appreciate you having us on. You guys are great to work with. Uh, Rob, also to you, quick thanks uh, in advance for for doing this. Um, you're just a, a champion. For those of you who don't know, Dr. Cononello is our, our most experienced Swift user. He's been with us from the beginning. Um, and so I really appreciate you taking the time on a, on a Tuesday night, Rob, to, to spread the word about uh, microwave therapy. It's my pleasure. It's fun to be here. And uh, there's so much to learn and so much more to share. Love it. All right, so uh, I guess first and foremost, we want this to be uh, interactive. So if you guys have questions, please fire them in there. Um, we're going to try to keep this fairly condensed. I know Carla's given me, a, or Stephanie was giving me a hard timeline of about 30 minutes. Chris, Rob, and I like to talk, so we're going to do our best. Uh, <laughs> but let's dive into it. For those of you who have, um, have been one, on one of these before with us, we're going to add some new content into this. I know we did it Taylor Tuesday probably uh, over a year ago, um, and that was back when we were we were only treating warts. Um, we're now treating IPKs as well. We're going to touch on that. Uh, we're going to touch on fungal nail as well towards the end of the presentation. And then Chris is going to highlight a, a new lease program that we're, we're offering. So uh, I think it really helps to address, um, you know, how do you start with SWIFT? How do you get going in the practice? How do you make it profitable early on? And there's a new a new lease structure that we think can can really help with that. So we'll do a mix of clinical. Rob's going to talk us through science. He's going to talk us through mechanism of action, protocols, some some of his cases. And then Chris and I will speak to you about how do you incorporate SWIFT into the practice? What does it look like? Um, you know, what are my outgoings, you know, to bring this in? What can I expect from a profit perspective? All those sorts of fun details that um, you might be interested in. Um, all right, let's uh, let's kick into it. For those of you who don't know SWIFT, if you've not seen it before, um, I won't spend much time on the actual technology itself because it's actually probably the least relevant uh, piece there. It's really more about what does it actually do for your practice? What does it do for your for your patients? But this is the look of the device. It's a microwave generator, smallest in the world. Um, we, we launched this business, as Dr. McCann mentioned, in 2018. Um, uh, really, actually, 2019. We got our FDA clearance in 2018. Um, and we've done about 250,000 global treatments since then. Um, we've got about 450 users now in the U.S., which is fantastic. So the, the technology is being nicely adopted um, and we continue to push along. Bigger and more important stuff is around what does it actually do for my patients? Uh, and there's really kind of three value pillars to SWIFT for your patients and your practice. And the first one by, by far is, is patient outcomes. Uh, so Rob's going to speak to us about his outcomes. He's about to publish a, a paper uh, that shows 87% efficacy, which is right in line with our sort of global standards of around 85% um, and less than 1% recurrence. So that's another big element that we might touch on throughout the conversation is not just clearing these lesions, but actually clearing them for good. So providing a, a real long-term solution. Next value pillar is around differentiation. So how do you set yourself apart from your competition? So being one of the only providers in the area, so that's a, it's an important element to private practice is doing something that others aren't. Um, so that's a big part of it. Again, we've only got 450 users in the US at the moment, so there is still a, a significant opportunity to do that. 
Um, and then the last piece is around profit enhancement. So we'll share some of Rob's profit data, um, but you can make some, some money while doing this, which is nice. It's a cash-based treatment. Um, so it sits outside of destructive CBT codes. Um, so you can make some more money uh, along the way. Um, and cash for those who aren't offering it might seem like, um, you know, it's, it might seem ambitious, but um, I think from where we're seeing it's, it really is the, the way of the future to have a nice healthy balance between what you're offering from commercial insurance and, and cash. So um, let's have those conversations again, if anybody has questions or, or concerns around it, let's, let's get them out on the table and we can, we can dive into it. Uh, okay, Rob, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to head it to you just quickly. If you want to just, Take everybody sort of through what uh, what you see the big challenge being with warts. I know it's a frustrating condition, but you know why is it that way? Yeah, so like back in the day when I was not using Swift, patients would come in and I would see on the schedule they, the Rucka was coming in, and I get a little cringe sometimes because I knew there was an opportunity that I was not going to be successful, and that was very frustrating. Um, it was less than 50% of the chance of time where was I going to get these patients better right away with confidence. Um, and the main reason is because the, the HPV virus is very stealthy. It knows how to stick around. Um, it doesn't have surface markers like um, other viruses do. Um, it's, it's remote. It's in the skin. Um, so the viral cells do go undetected for quite a while. Um, you know, the way that uh, uh, the SWIFT works. Do you want me to tell, talk about how SWIFT works, Pete? Too? Let's get right in. You're, you're, you're one ahead of me, buddy. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sure. So how it works is that um, it's a non-ablative type treatment. So ablation means that we burn, we heat, we destruct, and temperature's over 150 degrees. This is around 118 degrees. We say it's like the, the temperature of a warm hot tub. Um, and what, we, what they found out is by heating instead of uh, burning, um, being non-destructive, we set up this cascade of immune uh, kind of responses that occur. And um, as that goes along, the, um, the, the wart virus gets um, uh, exposed. And once it gets exposed, uh, the uh, Langerhans cells are able to replicate and um, we're able to clear this once and for all. So it's immunotherapy and it's something that's different. It's something that's a little uncomfortable to explain sometimes for some practitioners, but um, once you understand immunotherapy is really using your own body and your own immune system to rid yourself of, of this of this virus. Beautifully articulated. At practice. Um, do, you want, do you want to walk through your, uh, your protocol, Rob? Sure. Um, what we usually do is we explain this to the patient and the first time is that this is going to probably take three treatments. That's the protocol. Um, each treatment is going to last per lesion about um, 10 seconds. We do two second blasts five times on each lesion. Um, what we do is we'll see them back four weeks later and we probably repeat it again. And we obviously, what I do each time is I take pictures at the beginning and throughout the treatment. Um, after we finish those three treatments, we follow up with them 12 weeks later. Um, each time we do it, we utilize the about eight to ten watts, and like I said, two second applications five times. Yeah, uh, and maybe just about patient experience. Yeah, so what's kind of nice about it? It's quick, it's easy. Um, there's no dressing, there's no plume, there's no like special filters or masks you need. There's no um, you know bandaging that you need. Patients can go back to their activity that moment they walk out of there. The discomfort they feel is only temporary and it's only while you're doing it. Um, as soon as they're walking out of your office, they're feeling fine. Um, and that's, that's the beauty of it. It's, uh, it's a quick and easy and a very effective modality. Rob, do you have specific patients you target? Like when you think about, you know, who Swift applies best to or, or best profiles? I know you're somebody who offers it to everybody as, a, as the only treatment now for, for warts, but who are your, your sort of ideal Swift patients? Yeah, I would say probably the most ideal are, are young patients. You know, they ha they have healthy and robust immune systems. Um, if you, they just need a little jump start, once they get jump started, they can you can see it go away right away. I my practice is based around athletes, so I like to really work with athletic patients because they don't want to have to deal with uh, time away from their activity, um, especially young athletes. Uh, it's also you know a stigma as having bandages or tape or, or exposed lesions on their foot. Yep. 
couple uh, case studies you want to walk us through? Yeah, so here's a perfect one. This is a young patient. This was an eight-year-old gymnast, a high-level gymnast. She had it for three months. She was being treated for quite a long time uh, with uh, compound W, home treatment. We utilized the, the typical treatment of um, um, five applications of two seconds. Um, she had a lot of dis discomfort. Um, she, after eight weeks, she had total resolution um, and after only two treatments. So we said sometimes we utilize three, but she, after two, she was so much better. And that was in our recent study. We actually saw it, the average was 2.3 treatments. This is a uh, patient B. This is a physical therapist who was a runner. Um, he refers me tons of patients. So I had to get, come through for him. This is interdigitally. This is a lesion. As you can see, he's been applying his home therapy and just burning you know this with acids um this was uncomfortable for him um he even tried uh, a cryo on this and it didn't work um so we did this one time and you could show the next picture next slide it totally resolved after one um the cool thing was that his pain resolved after one week so that was really quite good he was able to run without any discomfort next this is my most challenging. I would say this was a um, an individual with stick fibrosis, double lung transplant, um, on immunocompromised medications. Um, he was just very suppressed. He had uh, multiple lesions all over his foot, both feet. Um, his the I ironic thing about this: his wife was an office manager of a very large um, plus, uh, excuse me, uh, dermatology center. And they threw everything but the kitchen sink at this individual. We saw him right before COVID. Um, I treated him two times and I lost him to follow up because of COVID because he was immunocompromised. Um, lo and behold, he sent me a picture uh, and you can see in the bottom there, um, this was about four months after the last treatment, the second treatment, and he had complete resolution. He was ecstatic. Um, he wanted to do a video to talk about it. Um, it was, you know, so it was, it was the cool part about that is that he was going on and telling his dermatolo dermatolo excuse me, his dermatologist uh, about how good it was. So it was, it was quite, quite um, rewarding for myself. This is our U.S. case study. Um, we looked at um, 59 patients um, that were treated and uh, we used the typical uh, treatment like we talked about. Um, and it was just monotherapy. So these were, you know, all different types of patients. These were old, young um, patients who had treatment, had lesions for a long time, and some who had them for a short time. Next day, next slide. And the findings of this was, like I said before, it was a medium of 2.4 treatments. The efficacy rate was 88%, which is amazing. Um, younger lesions were more favorable. So lesions that were not there for long periods of time were better off. We actually didn't find that the age in this study made much of a difference, but in, in just um, in clinical experience, I do find that younger patients usually are better, and they're usually because their lesions are, aren't there as long as the older patients. Um, the cool thing also was that it did not limit um, the patients from doing the things they wanted to do, um, and we, it was just a very efficient way of, of going about treating plantar verruca. One thing I'll, I'll just highlight here as well, um, when we launched this business, Chris and I started scouring for data and for research. And a lot of the RCTs around warts really only look at common warts. Um, now, sometimes there's a mix of common and plantar warts, but the the only study we could find was this Ever-T uh, clinical trials. And it's, it's, um, it's the only one that really looked at, at plantar warts specifically. And resolution rates, when you look specifically at plantar wart data, is usually about half that of common warts. Uh, and common wart efficacy usually, you know, tops out at around 70%. So any, any wart study, if you look at it, typically there's an asterisk that says, oh, and by the way, you know, when we looked at warts that were on the, the foot, we saw significantly lower resolution rates. So this this 88% number for you, Rob, is, is, is really you know, phenomenal um, when you talk about, you know, planner specific, because there aren't, there aren't many studies that are that, that specific to planner. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to your very first slide, which said innovation, you know, it's definitely something that is innovative. It's a game changer. Um, now, I don't get, I don't cringe when I see warts. Now I get, you know, kind of excited because I know that I can offer my patients something new and different that's going to give them long-term answers. Yeah, love it. 
Uh, okay, yeah, switching gears just to, to IPKs, which is something we're doing more and more of now. Do you want to just speak to, to what you saw here? So um, usually IPK patients are older patients, um, and you know we always thought that these individuals were patients that just had biomechanical problems that were causing this, and many times that is the case. Um, the more I started looking at these through uh, dermatoscopes, um, even just taking pictures and looking at them closer, you realize that there is a viral component to these as well many times um, that's just gone missed. So we started using these, uh, uh, this treatment, and um, lo and behold, we were getting great results. Um, even the ones that do not have that viral appearance seem to be getting better, and there's a few different ideas of why that's happening. Um, we're thinking that it may be the nerve gets de-innervated de a, a bit. Um, uh, it doesn't really matter. The patients feel better and they're excited. And like I said, these are older patients who maybe have um, an income that's kind of fixed, but they said, listen, if I can have relief of my discomfort and I don't have to come here as often, that's really worth it for me. That's my, because the only, their, their biggest, you know, uh, thing that they have in their life is time or a lack of time, and they want to enjoy their time. They want to be coming to the doctor's office and taking care of their IPKs. Yeah. And then this one. Yeah, so this was like when the, when the first one I ever did, she was an 86-year-old woman. She'd come to me all the time. She was coming to my office every four to six weeks in a lot of pain. She had fat pad atrophy, um, and I said, you want to give it a go? And she said, absolutely, because she was having a 9 out of 10, and she, we did all the typical biomechanical things and um, the bride events and foot and shoe modifications and orthotics and, um, you know, nothing was getting better. We did this and we her pain decreased um, to a six after the first treatment and to a four out of 10 after the second treatment. Um, that, that was a game changer. That was pretty neat. Um, this patient still talks about it to this day um, and how it really made a difference to her. Yeah. Uh, so, so we've uh, we're actually doing more and more research on this um, specifically. So, I know there's probably a lot of question marks in the room. Um, if anybody wants to dive deeper on this, uh, I know Carla and, and Stephanie and Ashley and the team are going to send out a, a follow up. Um, and if you guys have a request for more information, we actually have a full IPK webinar that we we hosted that we can send you the recording of as well. But um, there's a bunch of different theories. So. Couple of things on this. When uh, when we looked at biopsy data, more than fifty percent, to Rob's point, were coming back as deeply seated Veruca, um, and so that gave us an indication that maybe there is something viral happening here. So that's what we're seeing: either complete clearance of these lesions in some cases, uh, like in the case that Rob just showed, or in, in in other cases, we're seeing really good sustained pain relief. And so the question for that, for those more biomechanical patients, is you know why is that happening? And so our, our scientific team is really doing a deep dive into this. And so they're coming across, across different studies that have been performed on the impact of microwave therapy on some of these pain related responses and so a bunch of studies here just on on heat generation and what that does for pain um the next the next one which was really interesting was around uh what you referred to earlier rob was was around this this um, nerve desensitization and so there's there's lots of good sort of theory and, and research that supports this um, and then how microwave energy specifically and how fast um, you know that, that wavelength comes through um, can actually create desensitization of the nerve over a, over a long period of time. So you get this really good sort of immediate impact, uh, and a lot of providers will report you know an immediate reduction in pain almost the day after, um, but then that can sustain for between six to nine months is kind of what we're seeing. Uh, okay. Um, Chris, you've been uh, you've been silent in the in the sidelines. We're going to bring you in here to talk about some of the uh, the financials here. So, the, the questions I'm I'm going to ask Chris to answer is really around um, you know why why isn't Swift the gold standard yet? And so you know you go through the conversations and, and you say, great, this looks like a fantastic modality, great for patients. Um, you know we're getting really good outcomes. Everyone seems to love it. You know why doesn't everyone have a device and why isn't this gold standard? So. Um, you know, the, the, the concerns we, we get, number one, is sort of does it really work as, as well as you say it does? And, and hopefully we've addressed that with some of Rob's commentary here tonight. Um, the second one is, is my patients won't pay. You know, um, 
you know, I, I don't, my, my patients are all cheap. We, we hear that a lot. Um, so we'll, we'll try to address that, that question mark. And then, um, you know, we, we also get, well, I've, I've got a laser that sits in the corner, you know, I, I bought it and I just don't use it very often. So we've done a few things. We've been in the business now for about five years. And we've done a few things to kind of address those primary concerns, um, um, from a, from a commercial perspective. But, um, I, I guess just, just before I throw it over to you, Chris, Rob, just from your perspective on, on acceptance, we're, we're going to share our data on averages, but your, yours are much higher. Maybe just respond to that first question around, you know, my, my patients won't pay. Um, I think your patients, if they trust you and if you come across with confidence and if you have confidence in yourself, then they will pay. Um, it's never been an issue with me. Um, I think it's something that it's foreign to us of explaining to people of fee for service type of situation. But once you get confident with that, patients, you, you, they understand that and they, they trust you. There's a reason why they're in your chair. So I, I honestly have close to 100% um, turnover for my patients. So I think it's all about your presentation and, and, and just using it more and seeing the benefit of it. Yeah. What, and what percentage of your patients, Rob, would, um, would say yes to Swift? Yeah, it's, I'd say it's like 98%. Right. Okay. And, and, um, so, so Chris, I'll, I'll hand it over to you maybe just to speak to, to the rest of this data. Sure. Um, I've been quiet thus far, but it's not my nature. So um, how, how, how is my volume? It's good. It's perfect. Okay. Excellent. Well, thanks for uh, having us, everyone. I'm happy to be here tonight. Um, so yeah, the biggest question is, will my patients pay still? And I think Rob's addressed that, but, um, one, one thing I think that's really important and, and worth noting is, is the condition itself. Um, we tend to kind of overlook the frustration associated with the condition and, and warts really are the primary, one of the primary frustrations amongst not just podiatrists, but dermatologists, general practitioners, pediatricians, and it's because there's been no innovation in the, in the area. Um, and so the reason why patients are so motivated for a solution and the reason why providers such as yourselves are so inclined to look at a new technology like Swift is because of the frustration from the patient. And if you can offer that patient a good patient journey, a good solution, um, they are going to be your patient for life. And that retention tool or what we like to call as a patient magnet is really important for a private practice. And Swift provides that. So beyond just the obvious clinical advantages, there's this whole patient retention kind of patient magnet side of it. Um, Pete, is there, is there another slide? Yep. Okay, so, at least two. Yeah, so what I really want to highlight here is a new program that we've released a, a couple of months ago now. And listening to our providers and saying, hey, you know, that that primary concern of will my patients pay and you don't want a piece of capital sitting around um, like a laser sitting in the corner of the room. Um, we heard and listened to our uh, provider community and came up with a program that we think really essentially completely de-risks the investment. And I'll walk through the specifics, but um, essentially what we're offering is a, is a $99 a month lease program in year one, meaning you can build in not only the Swiss system, but 10 boxes of the applicator tips, which is 100 tips, keeping in mind that it takes about 90 tips in total to pay off the device in its totality. Uh, Swift marketing system, which Pete want, may touch on if we have time, and, uh, and 50 Swift patient brochures. Uh, essentially, though, uh, with, with what we know with our almost 500 users now is that the device is paid off within 10 months of most of our SWIFT providers owning the device. And so what we're able to offer now is something where you pay $99 fixed for the first 12 months. So your $1,200 for all intents and purposes in the investment in year one, knowing that most of our providers pay off their uh, full investment within 10 months. Uh, the tax savings component of it in year one is roughly $9,000. And so when you look at this lease program, paying $99 a month, and then your actual lease kicks in for the following 12 months. So in that first 24 months of ownership, 
you're basically in the investment for roughly uh, $8,400. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back to the slide previously. But yeah, here's a summary for it. Okay, here's a summary for it. Okay, perfect. So uh, what that means, what I'm saying here is that the tax savings that you get in year one of owning the device um, is covered uh, or covers the investment that you're going to make in the first 24 months of owning it. Uh, so what this does is it completely de-risks the investment. Beyond that, we offer a 24-month payback guarantee as well. So if if you're thinking about the investment, think of it in the sense of a 24-month window, and you will have more in tax savings than you will have invested in the technology. You get all the tips built in to your lease. Your average tip price is in your tips are included in the capital investment. So you get the tax savings on the tips and the capital, adjusting your tip value down to $38 from $68. And the tax savings component is more than the investment in the, in the first 24 months. Now, if you haven't paid off the device, so the profit that you've generated in that first 24 months of ownership, you haven't paid off the investment we will either buy back the system or we'll invest in further marketing initiatives to recruit more patients to pay it off. So we're essentially um, guaranteeing that you will have um, a worthwhile investment within the first 24 months of ownership. Yeah. And, and this is something just to, to piggyback on, this is something that, um, you know, where we've come up with, because again, it, you know, we're at the stage where guys like guys like Rob and others who've pioneered this and jumped on and said, yeah, I'll take, I'll take the risk. Um, yeah, yeah, I was brave uh, of, 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 you know, those individuals we're, we're trying to, to really make this the gold standard to do that. We realized we had to get a bit more creative because not, let's be honest, not everyone, you know, feels comfortable making investments in new technology or, or, or building cash. So, this is our way of saying, let's take that risk level down. You don't have to be courageous anymore. This is this is something that um, if it doesn't work out, we you know we wipe our hands clean. We we um, you know if, if you're not busy, it's a real partnership. If you're not busy treating patients with Swift, it's not good for you. It's not good for us also because um, we're we're measured on how you know our tip utility goes per per clinic. So if you have a, a, a system that's not being useful, it's, it, that's actually quite bad for us. So we'd rather buy it back and put it into another location where it's going to be, uh, you know, receive better utility. So uh, it's a lose-lose if it's not active. It's a win-win if it is. And that's why we do this collaborative marketing programs. That's why we're actually there to invest in, in your practice and help you out to, to find new patients and to spread the word um, because that, that really is the way it works. Um, Chris, I'm just going to backtrack two slides if you want, if you're able to just sort of walk them through sure. the, the profit per patient quickly. Yeah, so um, this is a year one outlook. Um, so again, looking at that $99 per month uh, lease program in year one, uh, the average treatment charge across our over 400 users is $250. Now you have the freedom to adjust your pricing model based on your local knowledge. Um, so you can adjust it. We typically see anywhere from 200 to 350, depending on the area. Um, our average number of treatments per patient is 2.6. So you can kind of count on that two to three treatments to, to resolution. And that looks like a swift profit per patient of $650. That's 250 times 2.6. Um, you can still uh, claim your initial patient visit and your 12 week follow-up after those two to three swift treatments through insurance. So on average, depending on the insurer that you use, that, that looks like $150. Um, so the 650 plus the 150, it's around $800 of profit per swift patient. Meaning, you know, you're in it for $99 a month in, in year one. So you're clearing $700 in profit for one swift patient per month. Yeah. And that's, that's another thing I'll, I'll just, just speak to is we, we do have some folks who are like, look, I don't see that many warts and I, you know, I only see five to 10 war patients a month. It's not a high volume 
thing in my in my practice. And I guess this sort of highlights, you know, you, you don't need many one patient a month and you're 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 doing really well. So it's it's not uh, it's not something where you have to have 20, 30, you know, treatments a, a month. Um, this is a you know, it's it's a device that, that can be profitable at just one patient per month. Um, you couple, you know, some of your IPK treatments with that. We'll touch on on onychomycosis in a, in a minute, but um, it, it's not like you have to be the wart king of your area to make this work. Um, okay, so we're going to push forward here because uh, I know we're getting tighter on time. Again, I promised I'd be closer to 35 minutes. Um, we're just going to highlight Rob's uh, financials. This is from a case study we did. Um, uh, I, I like it because it shows the impact it can have both on on your overall practice in terms of commercial insurance billing and on cash. So this is uh, this is what Rob was doing again. By by no means uh, you know crazy volume. 134 total treatments. Uh, seeing five new patients a month, roughly at 68 total patients for the year. So it's not like this was a condition that uh, you know Rob was seeing a ton of. And in the 12 months following investment, those numbers went from 134 to 634 and 68 to 298. Uh, not saying that everyone's going to see that type of explosive growth, but what Rob did a great job of, um, you know, was having his patients go back and tell his other providers. So I don't know, Rob, if you want to speak to how many referring providers you have now with Swift. Yeah, I mean, I have to say that everyone who's had Swift um, goes back and tells their their friends and family and their physicians and uh the dermatologist is right next door to me they don't look at any plantar warts at all now they just send them all to me um pediatrician the same way so you know they don't want to treat it they don't have the unit <laughs> they want to give it to somebody who's going to make them look good right away so it's it's easy it's it's you know it's 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 easy to look good because they already have faith in you and um, it, it just, it just rolls from there. Yeah. And even podiatrist and podiatrist, that's, that's been interesting too, but we, we have, uh, there is just a reality with therapy that's out there. There is an end point. So we see a lot of patients who are like, Oh, I gave up because no, you know, nobody had anything new to offer me. So, you know, there is a reality where, you know, you just get to the end of a road with the patient and what do you do with those patients? say best of luck, wish them on your way, or do you send them off to someone lo locally who has a SWIFT system? Uh, and we do see a lot of that. Uh, okay, I'm gonna touch just very quickly on marketing because I know we're, we're gonna open it up some questions here um, and then we'll we'll put a wrap on it. But um, just a few of the things that we do as a, as a partnership piece. Um, so when you come on as a, as a SWIFT user, uh, we do what's called a Google Business Profile Optimization. Uh, it's a one-time initiative to make sure you're being found for the right things. Uh, it usually results in about 40 new client engagements per month across the board. So it's not just Swift specific, but it's across the board for increasing volume to your practice. Um, we also get a landing page up on your site. So we help with all those things. So if you're not, you know, you don't have an agency that you work with, we, we get that up for you. Um, we then go to work on referral pathways. So we actually pull together a list of 100 uh, local doctors. You let us know who you want to target for those referrals, whether it's dermatologists or pediatricians, uh, primary care. Uh, we actually you know, put that list together and, and we both email it and then we start getting on calls to try to connect you with those, those referring physicians to try to open up new pathways. Uh, if we can open up you know, two or three out of the 100, it, it usually results in a few patients a month. Uh, again, which can make a really big difference. Um, and yeah, we, we then connect with your, your current patient base. So we have an email sequence that we get out to your, your patient list um, and we let them know. Often, sometimes you, your first five, 10 patients can come from your, your, your patient list directly. Uh, so that's something we like to do as well. Uh, and then we talked about this partnership piece. Uh, and what we do is we invest uh, 50 cents on the dollar for everything you want to do for paid advertising. Typically, people will get to six months. Um, they'll, they'll get to a stage where they feel really confident with the clinical outcomes that they're getting with SWIFT. And it usually does take about six months um, just based on patient flow and booking those patients in for, for their 12-week follow-ups. Once they get to that stage, most people are sort of like, hey, this is working well, I'm making money, my patients are really happy, how do I get more of these patients? Um, and if there's marketing initiatives that have worked well in your in your area, 
we'll partner up with you on those. So if it's a you know local radio stint, or if it's uh, print advertising, if it's paid search, or if it's socials, we'll we'll partner up with you. Uh, we can give you all the strategic guidance and and uh, and walk you through that as well. Um, last slide before we we talk about this the the offer we're we're putting forward with Taylor as well is onical mycosis. So um, this is not far away. Um, uh, Rob, do you want to maybe just speak to some of the early work you're doing on this? Dr. Carnell has been really helpful in uh, in testing out the protocols that we've come up with. Um, and so we're still working through some of them. We're getting uh, encouraging results. So I'll let Rob speak to that. We know uh, with SWIFT, we we kill the fungus. That's, that's proven. Um, it's now just a matter of fine-tuning the protocol to get it to a stage where we're, we're quite happy with it. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, Rob, why don't you speak to some of the early results you're seeing? Yeah, I mean, I've been practicing for 33 years now, and I always said if I could just figure out ways to fix heel pain, plantar verruca, and onychomycosis, uh, you know, I'd reach my Shangri-La, and uh, everything would be fine. And I think we're getting there, to be quite honest, with all of them. So, uh, so far, we've been utilizing it on... Um, individuals with moderate to severe onychomycosis. Um, and we've been noticing um, great results. I don't, I can't give you exact percentages yet, but anecdotally we're seeing um, clearing over periods of time. Um, it's quick, it's easy, it's efficient. Um, patients are excited, you know, it's something that they, they don't wanna take medication. They don't wanna be putting uh, topicals on that don't work. Um, this is uh, this is not uncomfortable to get done um and been seeing you know a great result so far from this and so it's very exciting i appreciate it um yeah so more more to come on on this but we are we're not far away so we got more studies that are actively underway not just in the us but in the uk and across europe and actually in australia as well so we're we're taking a, a, and in Canada, we're taking a global approach to treating this fungus. Uh, okay, um, just wanted to highlight this um, this year end and, and Taylor Medical promo. So um, again, as part of this partnership, uh, if you guys, uh, if anyone who receives this recording or is on the call tonight, if you guys want to book a, a call with us, we typically do a sort of just a 15 minute discovery call, virtual call. Um, just to answer any questions, we can look at your local market and kind of give you some guidance on what you could expect to, to sort of see profit wise. Uh, if you book one of those calls in April, um, we're offering you $5,000 off the cost of the capital. So what that does is it just reduces your payments after that, that $99 a month um, and adding in an extra free box of tips to that. Um, so it's a, it's a nice additional bonus as in part of a, that appreciation of being part of the, the Taylor group. Um, so the promo value is just over seven grand. Um, if you guys are keen, you can email us hello at esearcher.com. Uh, and again, I know that the team at Taylor is going to send out a, a summary with an opportunity to connect to us um, after this webinar. So um, that's that. Uh, Dr. McCann, I don't know if there's any questions that have come up. Uh, we're happy to take any questions from the, uh, from the audience. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate everyone's time. Dr. Connell, thank you again. Um, Chris, thanks for being here as well. I'd like to thank all you gentlemen for coming tonight. This was really, really good. And I found it to be fascinating and truly interesting. I can see where this would have a very widespread application in practice. And I really think the onychomycosis work you're doing uh, is is really um, has some incredible promise. I, I, I really think this is great technology and, and really appreciate you sharing it with everybody. Uh, in our chat room right now, we do have some questions um, and I will just uh, uh, fire them out and, and any one of you three, um, feel, please feel free to address them. Uh, the first one is, uh, there are two questions on Mosaic Veruca. Um, the first one being how many treatments per visit uh, on that mosaic on the hallux, how, how many total visits did it take to treat the mosaics on the hallux? I think what they're asking is that do you have to hit, how much do you hit? We break it up into quadrants and we try to, you know, uh, maybe hit each one of those quadrants, um, uh, you know, so that'd be, you know, f uh, four times doing it at uh, um, 
eight watts uh, in two seconds. Okay. Now the um, and the thing right there, Rob. I don't know if we highlighted it, but we get this global response. Um, so those larger mosaics, sometimes they're they're some of the nicest to treat relative to other options because. As, as Rob was highlighting, you, you just treat like mother warts or the primary areas. You don't have to cover the entire thing. So we, we often see warts on the hand go away as a result of treating the foot. Um, because once your immune system can visualize HPV, it's going to have this global response. Um, so it's, you know, the bigger, the bigger and the badder, kind of the better uh, when you talk about the sweet spot for SWIFT. That, that relates to the other question, I think uh, you probably answered it, but was the probe applied to one specific spot in the mosaic, i.e. in the center of the wart, five times for two seconds each, or was it moved around and applied to multiple areas of the wart for two seconds? Yeah, it's, we say we brave the quadrants, we try to do some overlap if it's a larger wart. Um, you know, the diameter of the, the SWIFT applicator is seven millimeters, so um, sometimes you have to do, you know, some of your Olympic rings to cover them in different areas. Great. Um, there's another question here uh, in regards to, um, would you consider raising the wattage to 10? Yeah, I saw that question asked. And, you know, it's not one of those things where, you know, more is better. It's the protocol is the protocol and that works the best. Um, if you do, and we do sometimes have more stubborn warts, we find that increasing the time is more um, important than just increasing the wattage. Um, I saw the question was asked, do we need to numb them up to go higher? We're not causing ablation here. We're causing an immune response. So it's a different way to start thinking about things. Right. So typically you're not using anesthesia. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. That's great. That's great. Um, another question that came up here, uh, if there is hemorrhaging that develops after the treatment, does this affect the success rate? I think you're saying when you say hemorrhaging, you're talking about like, do, do we see a scab or a bulla afterwards or a hematoma? Um, it's actually a good sign. You know, if you see that, you know you're on your way, that things are starting to progress and, and the body is doing what it's supposed to do. Here's one, it's a general question. Any idea about how many people suffer from plantar warts on an annual basis? I don't know the answer to that one. A lot. Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. It's actually, so the the larger like macroeconomic percentage is like, it's about 10% of the population actively that, that have warts. Um, percentage of common to plantar is, is usually sort of three to one, but it's a huge number. The, the, the interesting question is how many of those people actually go and seek treatment um, and so what we're trying to do, it's, so it's, a, it's an enormous market, but the number of people who are frustrated, um, and willing to go seek, you know, medical treatment is, is a lot, you know, smaller because the, the frustration is not as high. What we're trying to do through our patient education is to let people know that, um, you know, you can get ahead of this, this treatment and, and sitting on the sidelines is sometimes what leads to this final layer of frustration and lots of downtime and, uh, you know, a, a pretty bad patient experience. So we're trying to, you know, get out and, and educate people and say, hey, if you've got warts, you know, if you read the literature online, basically it says nothing really works, specifically with plantar warts. Like, hey, nothing works. You might as well stay at home. Like placebo is kind of just as good. Uh, like if you're on by the MD, it's kind of like, hey, just just wait it out, see what happens. And we're trying to change that narrative a bit to be like, mm, no, you can you can get after this. And not only can we get after it, but we can actually teach your body how to identify HPV, not only to get rid of your your warts, but there might, who knows? I mean, this is research that's still ongoing. But if we can teach your body how to visualize certain strains of HPV, you know, what's to say we can't, you know, eradicate other you know HPV related conditions downstream as well. Yeah, I think the other thing to be cognizant of is that we said earlier that some clinicians are saying that they don't see a lot of warts. Well, they are. They're just not looking for them. And many times now, patients are coming in and they say, oh, I have heel pain. I also have this callus on the bottom of my foot. I didn't know if it means anything. And lo and behold, they have warts. So if you're seeing an active patient volume 
um, especially athletic patients, you're seeing warts daily and sometimes you're just missing them. Um, when you start treating them successfully, you're looking for them. That's very true. I, I, I once heard a, a, a wise colleague of mine many years ago uh, did a lecture called Don't Get Caught in the Nail Groove. In other words, you, you come in and you're doing the same thing. Maybe you're debriding nails, maybe you're treating heel pain, whatever it might be. Don't get caught in the groove of that one thing. Look for other things. Ask people if there's other problems. And it's, it, 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 it is amazing. It is amazing. Uh, how much response you'll get to that. I, I do it every day. I think it's critical to really give the patient a, a, a full foot and ankle service. Um, I have another question here. Um, again, a, a scientific questions are coming in. Uh, very interesting. Uh, for the HIV positive patient whose immune system is compromised, do you have any suggestions? Yeah, I mean, I think you have to give them realistic expectations, you know, like I, I showed in my example of the patient who's immunocompromised, um, you know, they're going to be more of a challenge. But, you know, here's my guy who's totally in, immunocompromised, double lung transplant, and he found resolution after two times. So, you know, there, there's still hope for all those patients. You just have to go through it. You might take them a little bit longer to respond. Um, and it might be one of those situations where we might decide to do an extra treatment or two if need be in the, in the size of the lesions. But be patient. That's the one thing I have to say is be patient. It's not one of those things you're going to say, ah, it didn't work. I did it three times. I don't like this machine. Stay patient and you're going to see a change as time goes on. Which I think is true with almost any anything we do. Um, you know, it's always wonderful to get the patient who comes back for their first follow up and they're one hundred percent better. But we all know it doesn't happen that often. Uh, you really have to you 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 really have to stay with it. Yeah, I mean, COVID helped me with that because there was a time where patients weren't coming in, um, and we had done some treatments, and lo and behold, we just waited a little bit longer to go. Oh, that thing went away. You know, from the treatment they gave me. Thank you. I'm like, great. That's a good example. Um, just uh, maybe, maybe uh, 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 moving over to uh, some mar marketing questions. Uh, how often have you had to buy back a system from a client? Does that happen very often? Yeah, it's a good question. We, we've done it twice. Um, so pretty good ratio over over 450 odd. Um, one was a mobile podiatrist of a startup, didn't quite work out. Um, and the other was uh, was just, just volume based. We, we'd sort of hoped that uh, we'd be able to switch things on for them, but um, yeah, wasn't wasn't really a priority. So, you know, if we have to do it, we'll, we'll do it. The, um, yeah, it's just not something we've, we've had to do much of. So it's, it's, it's encouraging. So nice nice to be able to offer it and, and it's there as a security blanket but uh reality is even when even if folks are are not seeing the volumes they hope the the the, the interest in in retaining the systems because of the clinical outcomes is really really high i think everyone focuses on the the economics at the outset when they're making the purchase and then once they have like a, a patient their first sort of wow moment from a patient experience standpoint um that's really what sort of is the is the key value and we get back on our calls because we do a lot of follow-up calls with our, our providers and you know you say how are things going they're like it's going amazing um you're like oh you're, you know you're not doing that many treatments you were hoping to do more let's say um they're like oh no but i'm thrilled with the clinical outcomes and, and at the end of the day that's that's the, the big thing for for most of our users i want to just talk about a marketing thing real quick it goes back to dr mccann I'm talking about that don't get into the nail groove i love that comment that's great um but like sends like, you know, so if you, you know, a lot of times we get uh, kind of caught up in the fact that this is fee for service, but we do fee for service daily. Um, people who have uh, uh, orthotic castings and uh, people doing regenerative medicine um, and doing shockwave. Um, this falls into that same groove and there's a synergy amongst all those things. So those are the kind of patients that maybe will give you more ROI. Um, just make you feel happier about the things you're doing. Um, and, you know, if you want to have one type of practice, you can have that. And it's going to be um, a little frustrating sometimes. Or you can have this type of practice, which I have been successful and, or, and able to do. Um, and it 
and it and it just evolves from there. So like like sends like. That's an excellent example, and it, it and it, it, in in light of that uh, shockwave therapy, we we our, our practice uh, introduced uh, extracorporeal shockwave uh, uh, therapy to New Hampshire, and we got we got referrals from podiatrists and orthopedic surgeons from all over the state for plantar fasciitis, and that that was in two thousand four, I think. Uh, we we've been we we to this day we still see people sending uh, sending patients to us for that because not everybody does it. Um, I, I I think that's a a, a very uh, poignant example. Um, uh, well, uh, I think with the, the little bit of time we have left here, um, are there? I don't see any more questions up on the chat room. Um, I'd like to just uh, if we can just go up to the next slide. Um, I'd like to just talk to everybody now about next uh, Taylor Tuesday, which is going to be May 2nd at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, just like tonight. Um, we're going to be talking about the ProVista You Go To GPO. Pro, ProVista is basically a soup to nuts GPO, and you can get everything here. You can get supplies, you can get travel, you can get Disney packages, office equipment. Uh, and much, much more. This is really uh, a, a, an amazing opportunity for your practice to save on just about everything you touch uh, in, in in the course of your day and running a practice. Um, I think it's something that you really don't want to miss, um, and uh, would would really want to learn more about and and learn more about how to uh, save some money for your practice. Uh, we're uh, very pleased to welcome uh, 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 Blair uh, Bendain to uh, uh, she's senior sales with ProVista and uh, Taylor has worked uh, uh, in tandem with them and they, they've been a great partner. So I, I, I certainly hope that everybody will uh, uh, come and join us for that. Um, and in closing, uh, before we go, um, gentlemen, is there anything else you would like to add? Not from my end. I would just say, uh, yeah, and again, a big, a big thanks uh, to you, Dr. McKenna, for for the opportunity to to chat with everyone tonight, and uh, and again, thanks to uh, to Chris and to you, Dr. Conanello, for for being a part of it. Um, you know, we we always appreciate the opportunity to to jump on, even if it's if it's late on a Tuesday, and and uh, and talk about you know the things that we we get so passionate about. Never thought I could get so passionate about micro and warts, but here we are. Yeah, I just. I'm sorry. I'm good. No, please, Dr. Cononello. The floor I just is want here. to add that I, I'm, I'm always available. You know, um, I, I, I learned so much from the people who came before me, and I hope that I could pass on to others. Um, if you just want to ask some questions or you're, you're concerned or you're having challenges, um, I'm, I'm there and I'm available. Awesome. That's a great offer, you know, uh, having an expert like yourself be able to help uh, new new people with this technology, uh, especially another DPM. Uh, when one of your peers helps out like that, it, it makes such a huge difference. Um, once again, I, I'd like to thank all of you for being here. Um, uh, uh, Chris McNamara, uh, Pete, Pete Turnbull, and uh, of course, Dr. Cononello, our, our speaker tonight. This has been fascinating. I learned a great deal from all of you. I'm really uh, pleased to be your host. I'm Bill McCann and ha happy to be here tonight. Uh, really, really, really was very informative. And I wish everybody um, a good uh, uh, holidays coming up um, and hope everybody um, uh, uh, has a good rest of the week. Thank you all for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks so much. Good night. Take care.